Hi, welcome to the Isotope Plasma Chemistry and Geochronology Laboratory. So we at ICGL are interested in the timescales and processes of the formation and evolution of our solar system and the rocky bodies within it such as Moon, Mars and other asteroids. To answer these questions, we study the stable and radiogenic isotopic compositions of meteorites. Now in fact, ICGL is one of the few isotope laboratories in the United States that is dedicated to the analyses of meteorites. Now this means that we have to be very careful about minimizing terrestrial contamination at every single step. Now, which means that everything in the lab has to be extra clean, which is why you see me in this bunny suit with my headgear and my safety goggles on, because this is something we have to wear every time we're in the lab for two reasons. One, like I mentioned, we have to minimize terrestrial contamination while dealing with extraterrestrial samples. And two, we have to also keep ourselves safe because we deal with a lot of acid mixtures. So I will take you through the lab right now and show you what we actually do. Okay, so now that you've decided on the question that you want to answer and identified the meteorite that you want to answer the question with, this is where you come. This is the Mineral Separation Laboratory and any meteorite that you acquire first comes into this place. So this space is dedicated to the cleaning and processing and preparation of the meteorite prior to its acid dissolution. So you would essentially clean it using an ultrasonic heater and then you would, depending on what you want to do, you either pick your minerals or you micromill your samples, weigh them, powder them, and you know, get it ready for uh, the solution. Now once you are out of the mineral separation lab with your sample all clean and prepped, you move on into the main lab right here. These are the uh, hot plate digestion uh, goods where the samples that you have just prepared go into an acid solution and are digested uh, on, the, on these hot plates. And uh, depending on the mineral composition of your sample, either this is the this is it and your sample is dissolved or if you have a, a higher refractive content in your meteorites then you would do a second step of digestion wherein you would put these dissolved samples or partially dissolved samples into pressurized hard jackets and once you are um, satisfied that um, your meteorite sample is all it, it properly dissolved this is where you come in so these are class 10 hoods where we uh, conduct our column chromatography to separate out the elements of interest. Now, I mentioned class 10 foot, which means that every cubic foot of this area within this hood contains about 10 or less of particles. So that's how clean it has to be. And uh, the lab, uh, in general, for that matter, is a class 1000 lab. And we have separate uh, hoods for each uh, element that we are interested in. And these are some of the polychromatic uh, goods that we have. And like I mentioned, everything has to be super duper clean in here. And uh, this is uh, our acid lab. Distill and titrate are acids. Uh, there are multiple stages of distillation, again, to ensure everything is, all our acids are devoid of any terrestrial contamination and uh, we do not compromise on the quality of our data. Okay, now that you have uh, your element of interest separated out from the meteorite sample after calling chromatography, this is where we take it. So right across the hall from our lab is the metal lab where in our thermo Neptune multi-collector ICPMS or inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer is housed and that is what we use to measure high precision isotopes on our meteorite samples. So let me take you over there. So this right here is our NC ICPMS which we use to measure our isotopic ratios. Okay, so we introduce our sample solution in the form of an aerosol in the plasma source uh, where it is ionized. And then the ion beam is focused, accelerated, and analyzed based on its uh, mass to charge ratios. Now there are multiple collectors that then uh, measure the ions and that is how we get our isotopic ratios. Now once we have our isotopic ratios, we can then answer the when and how of our solar system. So some of the questions that we are interested in is how old is the solar system or when are the first solids in the solar system formed? What is the age of magmatism in the solar system? 
the isotopic heterogeneities that are recorded by meteorites and its components, which we can then use to determine the uh, source materials that were inherited by our protoplanetary disk, or the degree of mixing in our protoplanetary disk, and parent body genetic relationships between different meteorite parent bodies. Now, I personally work on um, iron and silicon stable isotopic ratios in a variety of meteorites and their components to understand the processes or the conditions such as pressure, temperature, and oxygen fugacity during the core formation of some of these uh, meteorite parent bodies. And we absolutely love what we do in here because these small variations in the isotopic composition of meteorites help us understand big picture questions about our own solar system. Thank you.